Welcome back. We are now ready to enter section three of this study of the theology of rest. As a reminder, we had five sessions on the meaning of rest and what value it is to God our Father and Jesus Christ our Savior and the Holy Spirit, that God takes pleasure in our rest. Then we had five more sessions on how to actually rest as human beings, human beings that tend to be restless. How do we get his rest, his inner peace in our lives in practical steps? But now, how do we take that rest into our lives and into our worlds of work, play, family, loneliness, being surrounded by people? Whatever our calling may be, how do we take the solitude of our hearts, the new configuration of God's rest out into the world? And how can we stay that way throughout our lives in a rhythm of work and rest? I want us to turn to the book of Matthew. And there we have a well-known statement from Jesus. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. I believe this text tells us that we are to rest as God intends. God intends for us to rest, and we need to keep that in mind. God doesn't intend for us to be restless on the inside. You think of an illustration in the Bible where Jesus was at sea, the Sea of Galilee, with the disciples. And the wind came up, but before it happened, he was asleep in the bottom of the boat. And they became so disturbed, they woke him up. Master, don't you care that we die at sea? He arose from the bottom of the boat, got up, and he looked at the sea and he said, Peace be still. It's always intrigued me with how the rest and peace that was in Jesus the whole time so that he could sleep in the rocking boat, in the waves splashing, restless sailors, disciples, being tossed here and there, and he's asleep. They have to wake him. But that rest and that peace of heart is then upon the waters with a simple command. How can we be like Jesus, conveyors, princes of peace, like him, peacemakers, how can we be like him and take that heavenly rest from our hearts and walk into situations where people are disturbed and angry and bring peace into the room, where someone is fearful and we bring peace to their lives? Being instruments of peace. Well, it begins by understanding that Jesus calls us to rest. He intends for us to rest at heart, even if we're sweating hard, in a workplace. Jesus said, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. But your belief system throughout the years, perhaps you've been a believer for some time, or you've had some portions of your faith that are just not quite right. Perhaps your family has taught you to think differently, that when you come to Jesus Christ, all you have to do is work. All he has for you is work, work, work. So when you hear him say, come, you hear a job, some kind of work. And often in our churches, we take a new believer and we grab them right away because we always have extra work than we have workers. It seems to be always the case. We seldom have extra workers for the tasks at hand. And we call them into the church and we baptize them perhaps, or we, we uh, 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 teach them and we find out their spiritual gifts, and then we put them in a slot, and we want them to work, and work very hard and efficiency, efficiently. And so pretty soon the believer has not one job, but a talented person may have two or three jobs in the church, and pretty soon then they run into heartache. Heartache because they're overworked, and the expectations continue to pile up on top of them, and they seem to fail at some things and they get broken, and they uh, have maybe some disagreements with others. There's conflict involved, and we never told him about that. We said Jesus comes, 
and they end up having heartbreak, conflict even. And, and then there's this word burnout, where they simply run out of resources or such expectations have been piled upon them that they cannot meet, or maybe self-imposed expectations, and you're not meeting them. You're not meeting your own expectations. Or they have promises at heart and mind, and, and it's not happening. So pretty soon they walk away disappointed from the church, even from God, even from the call of Jesus Christ. Perhaps they never go to church for years. Maybe never again they go to church because they equate the call of Jesus come to me with not rest, but work, some kind of task, a heartache, conflict, burnout, disappointment. Perhaps that you're, that's your experience, that you've entered into what you think is the rest of God and it's anything but rest. So we need to go back to see what it's all about. And some of us take half the rest that God intends. Some time ago, I read about a missionary in the Philippines, and he had a wagon. I can't remember if he was pulling it by uh, horsepower or vehicle power. It doesn't matter. But he saw a man that was carrying a great weight on his back, and he was stooped over with suitcases, and, and he paused to give the man a ride. And so the man got on the back of the wagon, and away they go, and the guy was very much obliged, very hap uh, happy that he didn't have to bear that load. But the driver looked back, and he saw that while the person's feet were dangling free and getting rest, the man had not bothered to take the load off his back. So he's only getting part of the rest. His feet were free and rested, but his back was still underneath the load of pressure suitcases the burden was still there when god wants us to rest we want to he wants us to find full rest to enjoy fully a break from the load and so he says come to me and this is why we have this session it's actually session 11 but taking a load off as god intends come to me here's the full verse all you who are weary and burdened and i will give you rest Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Weary. What is weariness? Well, there are two kinds of weariness, one of the body and one of the soul or mind or emotions. There's weariness that comes by way of physical labor, where we become weary or tired uh, from strong exertion. Maybe you have a physical job and you have to lift with your hands and your arms. Could be male or female. We think of those that lay, take cargo from the planes or sometimes from passengers on those conveyor ba belts. And sometimes the bags are heavy, too heavy. Well, you get the idea. Others have strenuous jobs because they drive. They drive a vehicle and it gets wearisome and tired. So there's that physical weariness. But then there's also the emotional, whereby we become discouraged and we even want to give up. Discouraged uh, and we become weary. And uh, that's the emotional. And likewise, burden. Weariness due to burdens, physical again. Someone's carried the heavy load. But then there are the emotional as well, requiring burdensome legal observances. We should keep in mind that as Jesus spoke these words in Matthew chapter 11, that he did so in a culture where there were religious officials that put great burdens upon people. They themselves couldn't keep the law which they pretended to keep, but then they made it heavier on people. They had many, many Sabbath observances, Sabbath ordinances, Sabbath statutes, far beyond what God said in His Holy Word. They made it more difficult upon the people. They taxed them mentally, physically, and monetarily. They did all of this. And so Jesus comes along and says, Come to me. I'm not coming to tax you, to take from you. But I'm coming to give you rest from your weariness, from your burdensome, whatever it be. 
Come to me, you can trust me. What a refreshing word in his day and age. What a refreshing word to us in our day and age. Because a lot of people, though they have conveniences, they're unrested. We never take a break from our cell phones or sell them from our computers. He says, take a break, find rest. It's okay. You can trust times of rest. So taking a load off as God intends requires that you and I accept Christ's offer of rest from our work. It's okay to set our work aside. And that's what he's saying. Take a rest from your work. After I started having Sabbath rest experiences where I went weekly for two to three or four hours at a time in solitude, I was learning how to get rest inside of me. And to be honest, it was about 10 years of learning that, getting rest from work. Then there was another 10 years whereby I was learning to rest more confidently, peacefully as I worked. Uh, I'm a hard student. That is, it takes me, I'm hard-headed. It takes me a while to learn. So it was 10 years of learning to rest from work. And then another 10 years to learn to rest in work and bring work, bring, bring that rest into my heart, into the workplace, wherever I was, and being a person that came and brought peace. I don't always do that. Sometimes I still disturb other, other, other people. Sometimes I disturb them too much with my own anxiety. But at least I know now the path where I can go to reconfigure the rest internally and come back and bring peace into people. Well, that's what this is about. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take a break from your work. Learn to do that. Now, for that to happen, you have to recognize your condition. You're not going to rest if you keep saying, I'm not tired, I'm not tired. I don't need a break. The message, a translation, a paraphrase written by Eugene Peterson, puts it this way, are you tired? worn out, burned out on religion, come to me. And the NIV says again, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened. But I think the message gives us a little insight. Some are burned out, tired of religion, wore out. You have to admit your condition. I am wore out. I need the kind of rest that Jesus is speaking about. So quit denying it. And then you have to recognize your need for recovery. Your cells have been broken down in your body, perhaps by physical fatigue. You are broken down. It's going to take a while to restore your physical body, your mind, your emotions that are frayed and unraveled. You have to have a time of recovery. Again, Eugene Peterson puts it this way. Get away with me and you will recover your life. First, admit your condition. Then recognize your need for recover, recovery. It's not going to happen immediately. As I said once before, when I was very ill at the age of 30, it took a year. It took a year of taking naps every day until I restored my body. I was working during that time, but I had to take some breaks even during the day, even if it was a half hour, it helped greatly. Recognize your need for a trainer. If you really want to change, get a trainer. Now, a lot of people these days are exercising, some to lose weight, some to be in shape for a marathon or just to feel better physically. And so, if you're serious about it a little bit, you might, uh, you might ask someone to, uh, well, you might get a video, video, or you get a list of things to do, and that's good. But if you're more serious about it, you might get a membership at some kind of exercise place. And where you go and there are others doing the same thing, and that's an encouragement for you to exercise and be in good shape. But if you're really serious, because you can goof off before a tape, you can goof off before a video, or even at a 
exercise place. You get a trainer and they stand over you and they say, do push-ups. No, do good push-ups. You aren't going down far enough. Why are you stopping at three? Three, four, five, six, 21, 22, 23. Don't collapse, keep going. And so it is a trainer stands over you to make you, to help you do what you want to do and make the changes in your life. Well, guess what? Jesus said, don't come to this person, to that person, but you come to me because I know how to rest. You come to me, I will be your teacher, your trainer. Come to me, come to Jesus, and I will give you rest. I will show you how to take a real rest. So, you need to recognize your condition, your need for recovery, and we've got to let Jesus be our example. We've got to let Jesus show us to rest and how to rest. Have you benefited from our teaching ministry? Have you found TVS videos helpful and relevant? Please consider supporting us with your prayers and financial gifts. For more information, visit tvsseminary.com. Get real, Oswald Chambers says it this way. Come to me. If you want to know how real you are, test yourself by these words. Come unto me. In every degree in which you are not real, you will not come. You'll dispute rather than come. You will quibble rather than come the last lap of unutterable foolishness. Just as I am, you need to come. Get real. No more de de denial. Oh, I'm okay. Oh, I'm not tired. Ah, uh, but your re friends, your relatives, your parents, your husband or wife, if you're married, your children say you're tired. I remember once that Lois and I were on a short vacation and I called our youngest son who was probably in high school at, at that time. And we were resting and he said, Dad, I hardly recognize you. You sound so relaxed. Well, that was, you know, I think I needed to hang up the phone because he was sounding so honest. You get the idea. Others will tell us that we need rest.